So what is the best replacement battery on Amazon? Are the cheap ones as good as those that are expensive? Or should you just buy a genuine Dyson V6 battery? Today, we hopefully find out through some extensive testing and dissection. There are a ton of replacement Dyson V6 batteries on Amazon, and there is no way that I could sample them all. So for this video, I picked four specifically, and I'll get into the reasons why. Our testing protocol included runtime tests on low, runtime tests on high, monitoring constant running temperature externally, dissecting and researching the cells, and finally testing the milliamp hours of the cells themselves. I also attempted to test temperature up to 20 amp load to make sure that they stayed safe, but my battery sled was of less than stellar quality and caused fluctuations and then melted down, so that part of the test was scrapped. I think the data that was gathered is more than sufficient to draw a conclusion. The test subject was a Dyson V6 with the original battery that is about 8 years old. It had a brand new filter installed, and all tests included the electric nozzle. These units are rated for 21.6 volts and run at a maximum of 350 watts, so this unit draws about 16 amps, meaning that a high drain quality cell is needed to avoid overheating, premature wear, and unsafe situations. Beyond the original Dyson battery, our first battery is the first power 4.8 amp hour. This was a promoted item on Amazon and represents the upper end of the replacement battery price range. It was purchased for a price of $30.99, so we'll see if the performance matches up to its largest as-tested price. Next up is the Duty One 3.5 amp hour battery pack. This is the second cheapest unit we will be testing on a sale price at the time of the order of $21.59. This is an impressive amp hour claim given the price point, so we're going to see if it can live up to that. Our third option is the Lexi 3.0 amp hour replacement battery. This was the second most expensive unit at $29.95, and there was a $5 coupon at the time of purchase which brought it down to $25. This one intrigued me because it eschews the typical Dyson clone exterior design for something more original. I wanted to see if that freedom of thought carried through to the unit. The final battery pack is the HSW 3.6 amp hour unit. This was the least expensive in the test at $20.99. At the time of this recording, the battery is now out of stock. Now let's jump into testing and start with runtime. First up, we tested the original battery of the unit. Obviously, this won't have the capacity it had when new, but it will also give you a good idea what to expect when it's replaced by a new one. This particular battery pack is rated at 2.1 amp hours. This makes sense as it's labeled as using Sony Murata VTC4 cells, which are rated at 2100 milliamp hours or 2.1 amp hours. It is important to note that out of all of these batteries, they all run their cells in series, meaning it compounds the voltage to 21.6 volts, but does not add any additional power capacity beyond what each cell's standalone capacity is. We first ran the original Dyson battery on low with the nozzle assembly attached. On low, the battery lasted 15 minutes, 17 seconds, and on high, it lasted 5 minutes, 54 seconds. High speed is the most taxing on the battery cells, so there's more heat generated. Because of this, we will use the temperature on the high run to gauge cell safety. The temp at the end of running on high reached 113 degrees Fahrenheit. Now the first power 4.8 amp hour. It ran an impressive 22 minutes 50 seconds on low and 9 minutes 24 seconds on high, taking the crown as the longest running battery pack tested so far. It heated up to 121 degrees Fahrenheit, which was acceptable and I think shows these cells ran cooler overall since they lasted significantly longer while only generating slightly more heat than the Dyson Genuine or the Duty One. 
At this point in the test, I'm suspecting this unit is probably using quality cells. Second, the duty one. On low, the duty one ran 13 minutes, 55 seconds, and on high, it ran five minutes, four seconds. This was not good enough to unseat the used genuine Dyson battery. The battery heated to an external temperature of 119 degrees Fahrenheit, which was within the same ranges as the genuine battery and the first power. Next up, we have the Lexi 3 amp hour battery. It turned in some impressive run times with 19 minutes 24 seconds on low and 7 minutes 25 seconds on high. The high speed could have gone on for longer, however, the temp of the battery went above 130 degrees Fahrenheit, which was higher than I was comfortable with. So I turned the machine off at that point when it reached 130 degrees externally. Given the heat, my guess is that these are high milliamp hour cells with a amperage draw rating lower than the necessary 16 amps. We'll see when we disassemble it, but despite these issues, it now takes the runtime lead. Finally, the HSW 3.6 amp hour came in last for runtimes. On low, it ran 6 minutes, 20 seconds, and on high, it only ran for 2 minutes and 30 seconds. During that short time, it heated up to 113 degrees Fahrenheit. But for it to reach that temp so early in the runtime shows these cells were being heavily stressed. So here are our scores for runtime. We can see that the first power took the crown, followed by the Lexi. However, the Lexi's heat issues held it back, forcing us to stop the test due to my self-imposed heat limit of 130 degrees Fahrenheit. The Duty 1 and the used Dyson performed similarly, while the HSW performed significantly worse than the other packs. First Power is a straightforward copy of the Dyson form factor, but out of all the batteries, this one is special for one reason, the cells. But we'll get to that in a second. Upon dissection, there were no issues with build quality. Remember, I'm not an electrical engineer, but nothing I saw stood out as poorly constructed. Another positive is the large gauge of the wires connecting the charging port and the switch. The Duty 1 is a pretty straightforward clone. However, out of all the batteries, this one had very small gauge wire connecting the charging and switch port. Is this really a problem? Maybe, maybe not. In terms of safety, bigger is better, so I wanted to point this out that it appeared to be cutting corners in order to save on cost. Now we'll look at the Lexi, which is the only non-clone design. It has an interesting clamshell design, and I thought this might make it easier to get into, and boy was I wrong. As you can see, this thing was just completely covered with some kind of adhesive. This is problematic in my opinion. Plastic or silicone based adhesives will interfere with heat dissipation, leaving the door open for more heat to build up. It just seems chintzy and poorly thought out. Next up is the HSW. But upon teardown, there was nothing notable or bad within the construction. Pretty inoffensive. Our next part to look at is the stated capacity versus the tested capacity and the quality of the cells. The gold standard here is the OEM battery being testable to 2100 milliamps using Sony Murata VTC4 cells that have a safe discharge rate of 30 plus amps, which is well above the maximum current draw of 16 to 17 amps the V6 produces. I mentioned earlier that the first power cells were special, and that's because they're MOLA cell P26As. MOLA cell is a legit, reputable cell manufacturer based in Taiwan, but they also own a production facility in Canada. This P26A compares very well to cells like the Samsung 25R or the Murata VTC5. It has a data sheet readily available showing a maximum discharge rating of 35 amps and a continuous discharge of 25 amps. This is well within the safety limit of the machine. While these are great cells, there are a couple things I want to point out. 
The first is the identifiers were redacted with Sharpie on these. This tells me the manufacturer of the battery pack bought these gray market and didn't want them traced back to the original purchaser. It doesn't make the cells bad, but it is worth noting. As to the stated capacity, the first powers are listed at 4.8 amp hours, which is not truthful. These cells are wired in series, meaning the amp hour rating of one cell is the same as the entire pack. Molacell rates these at 2.6 amp hours, and our testing showed that to be accurate. I used a PS Power DC5000 to test the cell's capacity at 2589 Ma, or 2.6 amp hours. So while the battery is rated incorrectly, this is still better than the Dyson OEM rating of 2.1 amp hours, thus the increase in runtime that we observed. On to the Duty 1. This uses a cell made by EVE, or Energy Very Endure, which is a Chinese cell manufacturer. Unlike most Chinese cell manufacturers, I did find a data sheet for this cell, which is the 15P, and I have to give them props for that. The sheet shows a maximum discharge rating of 30 amps, and it doesn't give a continuous discharge rating. However, if this sheet is accurate, I would say these cells would perform safely in this application. The EVE, or EVE, manufacturer capacity rating is 1.5 amp hours. This was backed up by testing on the DC5000 showing a capacity of 1561 milliamp hours or 1.5 amp hours. However, this pack is advertised as offering 3.5 amp hours, so we are well, well below the advertised capacity. That's why its runtime was almost the same as the 8 year old OEM Dyson cell. The Lexi was a royal pain to get into and get the cell out of the mount. Once out, it showed to be a GZNS 18650-2000. That's the actual model number. I looked all over the internet for a safety sheet from the manufacturer and the closest I came up with was a test by a third party testing company. However, information from that documentation was sparse and it did not give a maximum discharge rating or a continuous discharge rating. Based on the heat generated by these cells during discharge, I'm pretty comfortable saying these are below the discharge spec of 16 amps needed for the V6. Make no mistake, this is a safety issue. Testing the capacity, the GNZS were labeled as having a 2000 milliamp hour rating. Testing on the DS5000, it came out above that at 2,239 milliamp hours or 2.2 amp hours. However, this is below the Lexi advertised capacity of 3.0 amp hours. Finally, HSW was using another generic cell, the DSDC2. There is absolutely no documentation to be found on this cell, no matter how hard I looked. So while I can't say it doesn't hit the minimum discharge levels of 16 amps, my best guess is that it doesn't. My reasoning for this is that it only ran for 2 minutes 30 seconds on high, but managed to hit 113 degrees, which is about the same as the Dyson OEM battery after 5 minutes 54 seconds, and the Duty 1 at 5 minutes 4 seconds. If it had gone that long, I suspect it would have passed my 130 degree safety threshold. The HSW advertises 3.6 amp hours, but the cells are only rated to 2.0 amp hours on the cell label. Testing with the DC5000, it measured to 2,095 milliamp hours or 2.1 amp hours. So here's what's weird about this battery. Although rated at 2.1 amp hours, it only ran for 2 minutes 30 seconds, which is the worst out of all the tested batteries. Upon checking the discharge cells, it was showing 3.9 volts, which isn't even close to the low voltage cutoff, which would occur between 2.8 and 3.2 volts. My only guess is that either there was a problem with the PC control unit, or 
the control unit's working properly and recognizing an unsafe discharge state. In either case, not good. So what's our takeaway? First, the HSW and Lexi get a failing grade for a few reasons. First, no documentation on the cells vis-a-vis -vis the discharge rating. This bears itself out in the heat issues experienced by the Lexi and most likely is the cause of the HSW's early cutoff. At the small price differential between these and the first power or duty one, there is zero reason to purchase these. The duty one gets an average grade. It's using an off-brand cell, but we do have documentation for it, which is a good thing. However, it gets nowhere close to its advertised capacity of 3.5 amp hours. It really comes in at 1.5 amp hours and runs for a shorter period of time than an eight year old OEM battery. Also, I'm not in love with the small gauge wiring on the switch and the charging port. So this isn't a bust, but I still have to place it a far, far second to our winner. The first power comes away our winner. First, it has a cell from a reputable company with a known reputation for quality. It got the longest runtime out of the highest capacity cell in this comparison. While it's the highest price out of all the replacement batteries, it's well worth it because you're actually getting the performance and a modicum of safety for your money. All that being said, the best option is always the OEM Dyson battery. As I said before, I'm not an electrical engineer. All I can do is test, observe, and report. The first power has a couple small things that give me reservations. The first is the redacted P26A cells. I really think this shows they are getting their cells from an intermediary. This isn't in and of itself a bad thing. What I can't guarantee is that every run of these batteries is going to use Molacell cells. They may buy cells in batches, meaning this run was Molacell, but the next one could be a GZNS if they got a better price. The second reason I have reservations is they are overinflating the amp hour rating, which shows a lack of honesty from the company. So with those caveats, it still is the best in this test. So there you have it, our no holds barred comparison of four of the most compelling replacement Dyson V6 batteries on Amazon. If you found this helpful, give us a like and subscribe. If you thought this was an improvement over our previous battery videos, comment down below. And of course, I hope I will see you in the next video. Bye.